Alright, now question 7. We have an fx and we have a gx. Now, this fx, domain of fx looks a little weird, but again, do not be intimidated by all these notations. Okay, what this means is that well, x is an element of s, where s is a subset of all real numbers. And that means to say x are all real numbers. Okay? I mean, are. Uh, a set of real numbers that is inside all real numbers and so it could be all positive real numbers or even real numbers we don't really know okay so in fact that's what we're supposed to find out okay so for part one we're supposed to find the set s so that the domain of f which is s is the same as the range of g okay and state the range of the composite function f g all right now the first of all we need to what we need to do is to go figure out what is the range of g isn't it okay since we need to make our domain to be the same as the range of g so we must go figure out what's the range of g how do we figure out the range of g well sketch it out well the sketching of this isn't that difficult okay at all with your gc right so x must be less than three you know that when x is equal to three you get zero so square root zero you get a uh, zero so well there's a point here which is called three and you don't really want that and uh, it looks a little like this okay so this point here will be square root three and so on all right 10 to infinity so from here we know that the range of our g is from zero to infinity okay so this is the range of g so since the range of g is from 0 to infinity and we need the domain of f to be the same therefore the domain of f will be also from 0 to infinity okay so this will be the first part of the answer next what we want to do is to find the range of the composite function fg so first of all well does fg exist well because yes fg does exist okay because we know that hey, since you know the range of g is equal to the domain of f how so we made it so remember this is the domain of f and this is the range of g so they are the same okay and since they are the same so therefore we know that not only that we know that the fg exists okay not only that uh, we also know that the range of our fg will be also equal to the range of f okay so of course now what is left to do is to find the range of f how do we find the range of f well we we'll go, go sketch it out okay by the way this is g huh? so you better label otherwise you get confused by all the different different graphs there so what is our f how does our f look like well let's take a look our f is actually an exponential curve so shifted up by one so the horizontal asymptote will be at y equals to one okay you better know this because the gc is not going to tell you this okay you, you can't really see the horizontal symbol unless you go and figure out the values yourself okay by looking at the tables values or whatever whatsoever all right now we are inter only interested from zero onwards so when x is equal to zero you get one and one plus one gives us a two so well we have a two here this value and you know it goes down here like that okay ten to one y is equal to one and in fact the curve goes on forever up okay but because of our domain we are only interested in this and therefore the range of our f is actually from 1 to 2 that's all and both exclusive because well it cannot be equal to 1 because that's the asymptote well it cannot be equal to 2 because the domain excludes 0 at the first place so this would be our range of fg and that would be for the first part's answer okay the next part part to ask us to find the inverse of fg so since we know that fg exists now we want to find the inverse of fg okay first of all we need to go figure out what is the fg at the first place all right so let us scroll down a little okay now part two okay now to find the fg okay the I mean, first thing we need the fg fg means we're going to substitute the g into our f and that means we're going to have something that looks a little like this negative root 3 minus x okay now this this for sure it exists all right uh, well how do we know well because we, we, we sort of make it exist at the first place so how about the domain the domain of fg will be equal to the domain of g okay and the domain of g is given to us 
x is less than 3 so x will be less than 3 here as well okay so this is our fg what we need to do is not to find fg alright since the question wants us to find fg's inverse okay what we can do is of course you can try to plot this out using a gc and see if this is a one-to-one -one function or what you can do is you can simply assume that it exists since the question wants us to find okay so let's make some space to find the inverse of our fg so what we do is well we let y same thing okay so we let y equals to 1 plus e to the power of negative square root of 3 minus x this looks horrible okay okay you, you should really try plotting this out and take a look it looks weird anyway okay so let y equals to this so we're going to make x a subject so we know that e to the power of negative square root of 3 minus x will be equal to y minus 1 and ln both sides okay why do you want to ln both sides we, we want to get rid of the e right so ln both sides you have the negative root of this is equal to ln of y minus 1 okay so get rid of the negative we'll know that well square root of x minus 3 is equal to the negative of this this is all right something like this okay and we square both sides we have this okay of course the negative now becomes positive so we don't really care okay uh, and there we go okay making x the subject whoa well, some more things to do 3 minus the ln of y minus 1 square okay so this is um, the x the subject so therefore whew, all right fg inverse okay i'm gonna put in the bracket though fg inverse will become 3 minus away ln x minus 1 square and of course we need to determine the domain isn't it okay so the domain of our f g inverse okay i better write this now because it's going to be rather confusing okay the domain of our fg inverse is actually the range of our fg okay and the range of our fg uh, we actually got it up here okay in part one answer right it's part one answer which is one two so the range of fg is from one to two and therefore uh, we know that well the, the range the domain for this inverse function will be from one to two okay excluding one excluding two and that is how we end up with this answer and that is all for this question